Well, there's two gaps there. One is the gap between our ability to diagnose and cure, and there's other cases where we have the ability to cure but not diagnose the small set of people who will react very negatively. Um, both of these, I think, are going to um, uh, see major progress. Um, they have already seen some major progress. But for example, uh, different people have different responses. This is a personal decision. If you see some, if you get diagnosed for, a dis if you are offered the ability to get diagnosed for a disease for which there is no cure, some people say, I don't want to know that. Other people will say, I want to know that, but I'm not going to do anything about it. And third set say, oh, we're going to, we're going to embrace this. We're going to um, become experts on this disease, even, even if they're not even scientists. They become experts. Uh, think of Lorenzo's oil, where Augusto Doni, uh, actually starts to learn biochemistry and, and himself makes a contribution to uh, lipid disorders, uh, makes a new drug-like, food-like molecule. Um, but there are many cases of this uh, where people will become the poster, their family will become poster children for the disease. Uh, Michael J. Fox for Parkinson's and, and Doug Melton for diabetes and Betty Ford for cancer and um, substance abuse and so forth. And so I think that's a really a big opportunity, is to take ownership of all the things that are special about your family, both positive and negative, and link up with other families that have the same alleles, the same changes in their DNA, the same variations that make them different from the average, and see how it plays out differently in different families. You know, maybe that some of them have much more severe traits than others, and you can find it by sharing that information, you can see what lifestyle changes might be correlated with a less severe outcome. So I think that embracing things that don't have cures, um, whether they're severe or not, is, is, is an opportunity that we'll see more and more. Well, I think that certainly in the, I would say in the short term, but since these are exponential technologies, it's actually a very long time uh, in, say, an internet time, okay, is that we will, uh, I think that most people will get access to their genetic information. A lot of people will want it and they will get it. This will be a, it'll probably be affordable this year. And so that's not, uh, you know, that's not very long even in internet time. Uh, but then to get it interpreted, they'll have to share. I don't know exactly how that'll work out, but I, ha I see trends towards sharing. You know, Wikipedia, uh, you know, the Red Cross, all kinds of things, old and new, um, that indicate that at least a, a significant fraction of the population will share their their genes, their environment, and their traits. And I also see that stem cells, where you can take a bit of skin and reprogram it so then you can get access to any tissue in your body, that's coming down just in a few years. Uh, then using that to uh, fix what's going on in adult aging so you actually stay youthful for a longer period of time, not necessarily eliminating aging, but certainly increasing our, our that quality of life, I think that will happen, um, and that will have a huge impact because there's a certain wisdom that will happen when healthy people stay healthy and engaged for a long period of time. One of the, another one of the things that makes humans fairly amazing is that they do live for a long time, well past what would have been their reproductive limit um, in ancient days because, you know, grandparents and great-grandparents uh, and business leaders and so forth add value that goes beyond their reproductive years. And I think that if we can make those very healthy and very um, undistracted by, by health issues, that would be a, hu a huge change in the future. And then if we have uh, computers, robots, humans acting, all acting as supercomputers and geniuses, we have a, wor a planet full of six billion people, with each with six billion supercomputers, then you can no longer predict. I mean, that's a, that's a fairly rosy picture, um, but at that point, you don't know where it goes.